TAC Capital. Technical analysis quickly. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Before taking any action based on the information provided on this channel, it is recommended that you seek the advice of a professional licensed financial advisor. Let's do this. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to TAC Capital, your home for technical analysis quickly without the hype, FUD, and hopium. So let me dive right in here to Bitcoin and show you what I'm looking at. This is the Fibonacci circles drawn with the Fibonacci channels in the background. And you can see that we had this big run up here. We're on the 12 hour chart right now. So originally we found some resistance here and then blew through it, found some support here and then shot straight up, found resistance on the circle here, went over resistance on the circle here, and now we've just kind of been lingering along here. I think we're gonna find some resistance on this Fib channel, and that's what's finally gonna push us down. And when I say finally, I mean because this nonsense after the big run has been going on, I mean, I would say since the 9th at 8 p.m., it's now the 11th, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, I mean, these are 12-hour candles. This is two days that we're working on where we've not really done anything. And, uh, you know, you can see the Ichimoku cloud here where you've got the green flicking up away from the red. This is an indicator that the green is going to keep going up. It's going to create a mouth. And then we're going to drag the candles down into that mouth. So the mouth will end up coming up like this and so on. I've been over this 100 times. So this is what we're looking at here. Now, I would say mild caution on the fact that the red and the green are so close together. They're not separated like you see them, for instance, here or in a bullish scenario where you've got the green way up and the red down. And when they're close together, this means that it can pop off. But you have to remember, too, here they were close together. We had them lingering up here and then it started to open and then that's what pulled them down. So exact same scenario. And I would expect this to play out here. You can also see here that we have uh, bearish divergence. So while we've got higher highs on the price, we've got lower highs on the RSI down here. And that almost always leads to downside. So we're going to be pulling down here. So it's just further corroboration that there's downside in the short term. And I think we'll break out of the orange before we go back up. And this will be that swoop that I'm talking about on breaking out of the blue wedge. So we're going to you know, we've worked our way up here. We've clipped the blue wedge. Actually, let me move it down a minute. There, that's my anticipation. We've clipped the blue wedge. So then we're going to break down out of here. This is our swoop down and up. And we did that exact same thing. If you saw my video yesterday, when we did it here. We did one, two, three, four. Swoop down, because the blue's down here. We didn't hit it. Break up and out. So now we've just moved the blue. To a new spot and you can see that the blue is still going down because the green is an actual straight line and there's more space over here than there is over here obviously so now we're doing one two three four swoop down and out so this swoop down could be down here to break out the orange and up and at that point we'd be looking at the prices i was talking about yesterday Based on the FIB retracement would be 23,748, but that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. But if that ends up being what it is, let's take a look at what we're finding from a resistance standpoint from the FIB circles and the FIB channels. 23,748 is up here. So a possible path is we break down out of the orange and find support either on this FIB circle or this FIB channel. We might even do a little bit of a bounce. We could wick through it and then kind of get caught and come back up. And then work on our way back up to this point here, which we could hit either in the inside of this circle, or like we could get caught here, wick up, clip the circle, and then get rejected by the double resistance and then come uh, crashing back down. Or it could take us longer if we come back like this and then go back up over here, it would be the, this fib circle that would reject us. So there are, you know, Obviously, many different ways that this whole thing can play out, but I tend to think we're going to be finding the support and resistance at these lines because of how well they've been respected in the past. Like if I jump down to the four hour and give you an idea of what I'm looking at. 
like I said in the beginning of the video, I mean, the way that it's moving around this circle, bouncing back and forth here, and then up through, bouncing off the circle. So the circle's a big one. But then if you don't look at the circle for a second and just pay attention to the uh, the Fibonacci channels, like here we got hung up big time on the channel over here. Rejection, rejection, broke through, support, rejection. And then once we broke this one, it was a free fall down to this one where we got support, came back up. And this was found the circle before it found this one. So then we got rejected, we found support and resistance all along this line here. Uh, and now I think we're going to hit the this one right here. It also happens to be the the wedge, the white wedge that we're looking at. So we're going to find that there, which I think is going to finally reject us down. And uh, I mean, and that's just in this circle. Like you can zoom way out on these things and go way back and see. Like here's another one all along here. And then it fought between these two for a while. Uh, right, right there in between those two it held. You know, we, we zigzag between these ones right there, all along here. Like, you can see how it respects these lines. And the way I set these up, I'm actually going to put a video together for you on that at some point. Uh, it's very time-consuming, but it, I think it's going to really show you just why these things can be so trusted. But they are, you know living and breathing in many ways like they they grow and they adjust and so on now i won't be adjusting the old ones but you know as we end up further out you see how we have all the lines right here well there's much bigger spaces back here so if you want to have a better idea of what the hell is going on in this space you can draw a new circle and see based on prior patterns where we're headed in the future and it's really truly incredible anyway that's enough of that so then the question is, what effect is this having on the rest of the market? What's Ethereum doing, for instance? Because that's likely why you're here, Ethereum and Bitcoin being the title of the video. But regardless, how it's affecting Ethereum is going to be how it mostly affects all their coins as well. I think there's more volatility, obviously, in the other altcoins, but uh, whereas Ethereum tends to mimic Bitcoin almost to a T, but it still affects all the altcoins. So here is Ethereum on the four hour, and we can see that we have an, an enormous mouth here. And the only reason, in my mind anyway, in my opinion, why these are just lingering, is because Bitcoin's lingering. As soon as Bitcoin decides to make a breakdown, then the exact same thing is going to happen here, and we'll be coming down to meet the Keygen. It's just, when is that going to happen? And you can see that we're in this purple wedge, sorry, teal wedge, good lord, this teal wedge, and we went one two three and then four way up here and then we did instead of breaking down we actually well we didn't break up as in out this side but we broke up we've just been going higher and higher and higher ever since so this could essentially go up indefinitely because it's not going to hit this and it's not going to hit this so the sky is the limit but the ichimoku cloud says the sky is not the limit and we're going to be coming back down here now that's the four hour if we look at the five hour it's doing the same thing even bigger six hour same thing. Seven hour, same thing. So, I mean, it's ready to fall. Yeah, so we're talking coming down to 1639, and I think we're going to come down through this line. So, you know, if we end up doing something like this, and then where we bounce up for a second and come out here, maybe where we break is actually more, you know, 1670. But the 1639, we will hit this Keygen, unless something miraculous happens, which, I mean, I suppose is always possible. So the 12 hour, this has been going up so much on the 12 hour that it's actually pulled the Keijin up into the Tenkin. That's a little concerning because the 12 hour is going to be more reliable than the seven hour or six or five or any of the lower time frames uh, because it has more information. So it's a more prominent and dominant time frame. Just like when you get into the weeklies, I mean, that's going to play out. It's just exactly how. Is anybody's guess i guess you got to look at the smaller time frames for that so i would just say a little bit of caution is these are getting close together but because there's so much space between the two this is just the space alone is going to pull it down and if i turn on my 20 moving average you can see that the 20 is right here in between them the purple so th this is it's creating a downward pressure that's going to eventually pop and this this will come down but again, because this has been lingering so much, even the 20 hours pulled the Keijin up. So 
final analysis on this one drop to the seven hour look at the Kijin 1640 I would expect you to come down somewhere around the 1640 mark I think it'll get hung up on the Tenkin it'll get hung up on the 20 moving average and it'll finally bottom out here and then if it gets a little bounce it could come even lower to where it comes down and maybe find support on this fib line so back to Bitcoin I'd be watching for the 21.8 mark before we come down to somewhere around the 20,200 ish range and if I can get another read on a different time frame, same on the 16 hour, same on the 20 hour. And the daily, yeah, the daily, the Tenkin is the 20 hour Kijin. So those are the same. So that's what I'd look at. From a wedge standpoint, I talked about this yesterday, but Bitcoin is in a white wedge within a blue wedge. And these are set up like this. Actually, I should say a blue wedge within a white wedge. And both of these are downward wedges. So the white one goes one, two, three right now, and then should go down to a four. But the blue wedge, which is inside the white wedge, is telling us that we need to go up again. So we've got this playing out one, two, three, four. And then we should have a swoop down and a break up. Something to that effect may not be that big, may not be that violent, but we need to break up out of this blue wedge. Now it's possible that we just keep, you know, slowly pushing away at it like this. And then we take the blue wedge and we move it up until it's no longer pointing down. So if it's no longer pointing down, now we've got a sideways broadening wedge and then it can either break up or down. So then when we move the white wedge up to wherever it crosses, let's say here, so we've got our one, two, three, four of the blue, we can then now break down out of the blue, which would give us our one, two, three, four, something like that in the white before we break up out of the white. I don't think this is obviously going to be our four because this is too straight of a fall. I think we're gonna be heading down to the eight to $10,000 range, which a lot of other people have been talking about as well. But there's a lot of evidence to support that. I don't think 17 was the bottom. It is possible. I just don't think so. Because if I zoom out here on the daily, you can see that we're in this red descending wedge. And we've got two paths. One, two, three, four of the yellow line and break up and out, which is the people that think uh, that we hit bottom right here at 17. Or alternatively, we have this arrow where we're going to break down further. And then if, for instance, we did hit here, which we won't, that's 2,500, but I'm just saying if we did hit there for visual purposes, we would just drag the line down like this, and then we would have our one, two, three, four. This would actually end up being that hit. We could get rid of this arrow, and then we'd be looking at one, oops, I gotta move that. There we go. One, two, three, four, and out. And this is what I think is going to happen, just not down here at the 2,500. I would bring this up more to like, let's say 8,000. So it'd be something like this. We're going to drop down, but the 8,000 would actually be, you know, more over here. So let me move that. Try to get this as close to what I'm thinking as possible. Something like that. And then this would be the break up and out there. Actually, if we hit 8,000, I'm not saying we will, it could be 10,000, but if we hit down here, because this line represents 84% reset, the same thing that we did after the 2017 bull run. So if we hit 8 to 10,000 and we actually create a new spot of the, on the line here, we've got to pull this off, move this to be perfect. We would miss right here for us to hit here and actually hit 8,000, we would have to hit almost immediately. I mean, if I zoom in here more, that's a straight fall. And that's not possible. I mean, even this wasn't a straight fall. So that's not going to work. Uh, so I don't know if we're actually even going to set a new spot like to where we're actually moving the red line. It could just be something where you know we bring that in so it touches over here. And then we take this and we just come down some. So instead, from here, we just go up and we kind of wave and then go up and out. 
rather than creating a new spot over here. So unless we're in for a major downturn, one that even I'm not seeing coming, where we come down here and hit something like, you know, 4,000, unless we're doing that, I don't think we're going to have a new spot because I we need both the distance this way as well as uh, a newer low that would allow us to move the red down. So I think now there's a good chance that this red is established and that's just the way it's gonna be. So we might just come down here for a minute where uh, we hit this white line. Like if we do the $10,000 scenario, the white wedge is two, we'll come up here three, break down out of the blue, ending the blue wedge, work our way down, clip here, which is 10,000, and then work our way up, which would have us breaking out of the white wedge. And then all those wedges will be gone and we'll even be done with the red wedge at that point. And we'd be off into new territory for the first time since we started this red wedge back at the peak of the market. If I zoom out on Ethereum, Ethereum has been in the yellow wedge since the peak of the market. And we have our one, two, three, four, and we're working same as Bitcoin, almost identical on a breakout. But because we're going up in this teal wedge, we're gonna to have to break down. Now again, we can break down way over here on the other side of the yellow wedge. It's possible. I don't think it's gonna happen, but it is possible. We also are in the process of creating this blue wedge, which is what I think we're going to break down in. And we're doing this, and I think we're gonna do that, and eventually break up out of the blue, but I think the blue is gonna be much bigger like this. So I think we're gonna do one, two, three, four, so that ends the teal wedge because we broke out of it right here. Then the blue wedge, we're gonna break out of way over here. So as this wedge comes down like that, we're gonna break out of it way over here, which will be our yellow breakout. And this drop that takes place here coincides with what I expect out of Bitcoin. So that's my prediction on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. For now, it's just gonna be some more consolidation until Bitcoin finally decides to drop, at which point Ethereum and whatever other altcoin you're watching will do the same. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe. My other socials are down below for more timely updates that are just briefer as the market unfolds throughout the day. And I will catch you in the next video, guys. Have a great day out there.